do you and your partners believe that the Indian consumer, let's say in, in this mobile first world when they're interacting with apps over the next three to five years as that expands, that they're going to be willing to pay for products and services and have that culturally be in there? Because I think you know, Indians are known to be extremely price sensitive and expecting things, you know, there's a lot of competition. Whereas here you, you know, what we've seen in the app economy is that people are willing to just transact and pay a premium mm -hmm. over the phone. How do you look at that from a market's point of view? So let me just back up a little bit to set a framework here, which is that um, when we as early stage investors look at India as a market, um, we see it as a, as a base for building companies that serve the Indian market or as a base to serve customers in other emerging markets or even the US and Europe. So, and there are distinctly different models for these things. If you looked at um, you know, the first set of companies that came out of India 15 years ago that were more services oriented, the BPOs and the outsourcing companies, I call that US India Corridor 1.0, um, you know, those became big and substantial companies that are still around in most cases. Um, what we're seeing now is a, is a set of companies coming out of India that serve the US market at times. Uh, I can talk about that later. But that are also serving the Indian market. And when it comes to the Indian market, we're seeing B2B companies as well as B2C companies. So focusing on the B2C side, like you said, um, the consumer paid models have been far and few between to date. But there have been some decent internet properties built there. Um, matrimonials or finding somebody to marry has been a big part of the Indian experience, um, and that's been a classified opportunity in newspapers. Uh, but over the last 10 years, a company called Bharat Matrimony and another one called Shadi have come up that have built reasonable sized businesses where parents pay, essentially, to get their kids or their adult children to find you know, marriage partners. Uh, that's been a steady market. Uh, in the last few years and now going forward, I think there are some areas where consumers are going to pay with these credit cards and debit cards I talked about, and also through their direct banking or net banking as it's called in, uh, in India. Um, uh, first of all, there are uh, dating services that we're seeing coming up um, as there's a more westernized sort of young audience that comes up. 50% of India is under 25, 65% of India is under 35, which is markedly different from the US, right? And most people get married in their mid to early 20s. Um, we're seeing uh, apps and services come up. So Evernote, um, the CEO of Evernote, Phil Libin, uh, recently uh, mentioned in the press, uh, and his, I think, Asia country manager mentioned that there was, they're seeing significant take up in India as well. And people are paying for Evernote type services. Um, this 20 million number is important to keep in mind for India right now. There are 20 million credit cards. There are also about 20 million people who've ever bought online. Most of the internet services that are the biggest in India are under 20 million, 15 to 20 million monthly active users. Uh, and that number will expand only with more people adopting smartphones and credit cards. So it's going to grow not that fast. Um, but you're seeing things like um, uh, people paying for e-commerce and travel uh, online. And that's a fairly uh, decent market now. Uh, and uh, um, the other model you're seeing in India is SMB. Um, and while these services, and I'll mention a few, look like consumer services, the revenue comes from SMBs paying for customer acquisition or lead generation. Uh, an example is uh, Zomato, which is the Yelp equivalent in, uh, in India. Fantastic UI on your smartphone as well as on the web. Um, and what they do is they get paid listings and advertising from these restaurants, which are small businesses, and they drive footfalls into those restaurants, right? Um, and that's a consumer business in some sense, but consumers don't pay. These restaurants pay. Similarly, Nokri.com, which is kind of like a monster for India, a job recruiting site. Uh, on, the mo on the whole, consumers don't pay, or people who want to find jobs don't pay. The companies pay for access to the resume database. right? So you'll see many such models in India where it feels like a consumer brand, but SMBs pay for different types of business services. Uh, and so these are the two things that are growing, consumer paid services and SMB paid services. Uh, enterprise paid services, I think there's a while to go before that. This, there seems to be a, a lack of a willingness to pay for products. Um, a lot of people believe they can roll their own solutions. They find out that they can't or they make do with sort of different pieces of technology stitched together. Um, 
you are seeing a little bit of uptake of SaaS uh, products in India, but most of these companies are in the US and they are just not priced for the Indian market. You are seeing some SaaS oriented companies come up in India that target the Indian market and they, we, f we find a lot of them have a lot of friction in the go to market. You know, there are no big channels to leverage to go to market there and collecting payment from businesses as well as consumers is tough. A lot of the economy you see in India is prepaid, even on the SMB level. Um, the, the vendor will ask for payment first and then will provide the business whatever services it is. There is very little postpaid invoicing going on. 